Good morning, everyone. This is Biz Chicks TV. This is the place where you can find tips and tools to help you do business better. We're here to help you run a profitable business that's fun to run and to take the hassle out of your hustle. And today is Monday, so I'm here with my friend and co-host, Ms. Francine Gregory, real estate entrepreneur and tech diva. I'm Tara Lena from California Cover-Ups, and we are the Biz Chicks. Today, we're going to be talking about tools to help you stay focused. Yes. Because, you know, when you're in business, you need to get some stuff done, okay? Or if you're just navigating your life, you need to get some things accomplished. So with that, we're going to just take a deep breath because on Mondays, that's the day we sit back here at um, Biz Chicks and we just have conversations with friends and fam over here. So we're also on Clubhouse today. So you'll be hearing us talking to different individuals over in the clubhouse as we go through the conversation today. But we hope that you will get your favorite beverage, sit back, hydrate, and enjoy either coffee, tea, some thoughts, and conversation. And I'm going to be hydrating with my water today, and we're going to get this party started. How are you doing today, Fran? I am well. Welcome to everybody watching live over on YouTube. This, for those of you who are on uh, Clubhouse, this is being recorded. So if you are invited to come up and speak, you will be recorded. That is our disclaimer for the morning. Um, so over in the Clubhouse, we have Dr. Tachi. Hi, how are you doing, Doc? And we've got Mark Ward, our comedian, our resident comedian. And we have Terry Terry Johnson online everywhere. Wow, we are so honored today. So, and for all of you who are watching over here on uh, YouTube and Facebook and Periscope, we want to welcome you as well. And we are talking about... And those watching on the replay, we want to say hey to the replay gang. <laughs> Can't forget about you. Um, those, everyone who's watching today, we're talking about business tools to help you focus, to maintain your focus. To hey, Tim and Maureen. Good morning, Maureen and Tim. How you doing, guys? To maintain your focus, we we're thinking about that, and um, we had a little bit of a conversation with TJ and Mark over the weekend. And Mark made a very profound statement that um, I'm going to ask him to talk about that. But um, the noise that we generate, mm. the distractions that we generate ourselves, because a lot of times we talk about distractions coming in from the outside. Yes. But sometimes that noise of, is of our own making. Mark, you want to weigh in? Sure. When you said that, I was like, what did I say? Um, yeah, I think, I think one of the things that I think is so important for us is to look at the story that we are telling ourselves. Because the story that we are telling is either contributing to or inhibiting our success. And many of us are not even aware that we are living a story that we are telling ourselves. And it's either a story of limitation or a story of possibility. But there are two things that you need to know. First is that you are living a story that you're telling. And second, that you are the author of that story, which is something that we often forget because we often live as in response as if, as if everything is just happening to us and we are just reacting and we are just victims of circumstance. But that is not the truth. And until you can realize that truth, it doesn't mean you won't be successful. It does mean that you will, however, be limiting your potential success. Nice. Um, anybody else want to weigh in? Hi, Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer is over here also on Clubhouse. And um, Dr. Tachi or TJ, anybody else want to weigh in? We're talking about business tools to help you focus. 
And the first business tool that you need to help you focus is your own mind, is your, your mindset. All of it, I believe everything begins on the inside out. So we're talking about the mindset for focus. And there we're going to talk about a couple of strategies to help you focus within your mindset as well. But I want to hear from Dr. Tachi or TJ or anyone else. Okay. Clubhouse. Uh, let's see. Anybody yeah. we got comments over here? Oh, Dr. Tachi says, wow, great stuff. She's in two places at once. See, we could be in two places at once here. Okay. Well, I, I want I want to say this, this whole thing that Mark brought up about self-distractions. Um, self-distractions are really critical because they allow you to uh, control your environment. For instance, I have the TV practically running all the time, no matter what room I'm in. That is nothing to me but white noise. I could turn that off and exchange it for music, something soothing and non-distracting. Right. So, mm -hmm. so that's uh, what do changing the story that we tell ourselves, perhaps changing um changing characters in the story, doing some, I remember um, uh, Coach Karen, she would have a conversation with herself. She would have herself sit in another chair and talk to herself. And she would tell like, look, and if something was like something tragic had happened or something happened, she said, you get 24 hours to cry about it. And now you need to do something different. She put a time frame on that. So uh, one of the the things that we talked about this morning with regard to um, uh, mental focus is when we get ready to do a project, say for instance, I'm working on some emails, I gotta write some a succession of emails. Well, one of the things we talked about was a push session. Remember we used to do those push sessions? where you would set the timer for 25 minutes and you would turn off your phone, you turn off notifications everywhere and you get in there and you just work for 25 minutes, not 25 seconds. You would work for 25 minutes straight and you didn't do anything else, you didn't talk to anybody. And then at five minutes, you stop at the at the end of the 25 minutes, you would stop, you would take a break for five minutes, go to the restroom, get some water, and then you would come back and do another 25 minute push on whatever project that you're working on. It could be writing your book, it could be doing anything, your financials for your business, stuff you really don't want to do mentally. You're like, oh, I don't feel like doing that, but you put 25 minutes on it you set the timer, you get it done. And then um, you could do two push sessions. You've just spent, uh, what, 40 minutes? Yes, or an hour, depending on how long your push sessions are. If you do two 25 minute sessions, that's 50 minutes with two five minute breaks. That's an hour of focus um, work. Mm -hmm, on a specific subject matter. Right. I got any comment on this side? Yeah. I, um, <clears throat> hi, Fran. Hi, Terry. <laughs> um, I wanted to say about what Terlina was saying about the, the TV and being a distraction. That's a good idea about turning it off because it's just white noise, busy noise. And it, it it's a distraction because that's something that you're not actively watching. But your mind in the back of whatever you're doing, you're still pulling in what's coming up from, from the TV. So I was saying that's a good idea to turn it off because if, if you're not actively watching it or, you know, there's, there's not anything constructive on, turn it off, allow the silence or like Terminal was saying, the music. And then you'll see your, your mind start to be more creative and then you can get more things done, you know, on, and get more ideas. Yeah, I remember when we were doing these, and I think it was about two, I'm going to say two or three years ago when we were doing those sessions, 
we would ask one another, okay, and TJ, if I'm not mistaken, you used to paint. And we would ask one of, uh, we would ask uh, one another about painting. I mean, about your painting. Did you get in some time to paint? You know, we would in those push sets and things that we really wanted to get done. And we were like, okay, can I get it? You know, the things we struggled with were great for the push session. Yeah. So did you do your art, TJ? Mm -hmm. No. A little bit, not, you know, like you said, I got to find the time for it. I have to found the time, but it's, I've, I've been trying to find some time for it and make it a priority. Right. And, and oh, yes, okay. Dr. Tachi, go for it. Well, good morning. Good morning. So there are a couple. There, there are a couple of things. Yes, that 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 I thought about, and it is cliche to say, but not so much because sometimes we need a reminder. The power of no. When you're so busy doing other things for other people, your things get pushed to the wayside. Even if it's like the favorite thing that for me as a video person, someone always wants me to edit something. But, oh, it's only a three minute. No, it's not. Three minutes means several hours for me or maybe a couple of days. And because they don't understand that, they'll ask you to do these things because they think it's quick. So whether or not, it, regardless of what they think about it, if you can't do it, you can't do it. So you just have to embrace the power of no, not this time. Or maybe no, not. What do you mean? Like, no, not ever. <laughs> Well, oh. no, it's a complete sentence, and everything is not for us to fix. Those are some biz chick rules. Go, yes, and uh, Tara Lena just said that no is a complete sentence, and everything is not for us to fix. And what were you saying, Dr. Tachi? Okay, I think uh, one of the things, one of the things that underlies all of this for me is we are very focused here uh this is something we spoke about the other day is one of the things that we are often hyper focused on is um the the what we're doing the doing the doing the doing the doing that's part of sort of western culture and what i would like to invite people to add to their toolbox is the addition of who we are being because who you are and how you show up affects the way that you do what you do. So one of the tools that we have with in ourselves and in our ability is the opportunity to choose each day. Who do you want to be today? The two most powerful words that can ever be spoken are I am and whatever follows I am will find you. Mm. So whatever you declare following the I am is an invitation to the universe to respond in kind. So I always invite people to choose the adjective that best represents who they want to be today. And not to stop there, but to decide then how are you going to evaluate your success in that capacity? In other words, what does that mean to you? How does that show up? What are the challenges and obstacles that you see already that could perhaps inhibit you in that regard? And how will you overcome them? If you make this part of your consciousness and part of your daily practice, I guarantee you it will change your life in ways that you cannot possibly imagine. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we have Yolanda here. And Yolanda just wanted to let you know that we are recording. Um, just wanted to make sure you understood that. Well, what was your take, my dear? Okay, let me see if I can jump in because I'm jumping from your Facebook to over here. <laughs> um, can I can I come back? Because I'm just listening and I'm writing, but I, I jumped in because I heard something. I don't remember what it was. Okay. I'll come back up. Okay, no worries. Thanks. So... I like that, Mark. We are, what are we, we, the being versus the doing. I am what? 
I, I, and I suggested everybody fill in the blank. And I think Mark is saying we fill in the blank every day when we get up. I am powerful. I am, um, I either I am available or I'm not available today. Uh, you know, depending on what people's requests from you are, um, declaring what we are each day. Is that, did I hear that right, Mark? Did I get that right? Yes, the adjective that best describes who you want to be today. However, never a negative. Always, because, okay. Because the, the, the rule of the universe, the, the words that you should always watch, this could be a whole other show, okay. is don't, not, and no. Because there are no no's, really. No is just a yes to something else. So you always want to be focused on that which you want, not that which you do not want. And and if you actually examine people's words and their behavior, you will find that in and of itself becomes another obstacle when you are always focusing on what you are resisting instead of what you want to create. Wow. Wow. I, I can see that. And going instead of me always resisting to, okay, so it's like playing offense versus always being on defense, moving forward rather than, okay, I got to protect myself from all of this around me and, and, and then just move forward on whatever it is that I want. There's a very big difference between uh, I am healthy and I do not want to get sick. I do not want to get sick. I do not want to get sick. Guess what's going to happen when you are constantly affirming that you do not want to get sick? You're going to get sick. Right. I I can see that. Thank you, Mark, for reminding us of that. Because I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be more mindful of that. Because we talk about watching our words all the time, but not watching it to the point where focusing in on what it is that I want. Today, I will ride my bike. And I can see in my own personal life that um, the the um, saying what I don't want is focusing in on the fear of that thing instead of focusing in on what I'm going to do about whatever the thing is that is not pleasing for me. So we're focusing on the problem versus the solution and feeding the problem versus the solution. Bur with our words. Embracing. I, re I, I used to say I refuse to be fat, but I now say I am healthy, fit, and trim. That that is my new healthy fit trim. That's what I am. And now I'm looking at, okay, so now I've decided to set up my room for healthy fit and trim. I'm bringing in stuff that, okay, there's the bike, there are the towels, there are the weights, whatever I need to be healthy fit and trim. And one of the challenges that people often have with affirmations is your mind right? The mind chatter. For example, you can affirm, uh, I am abundant, I am prosperous, I am wealthy. But if your bank account is saying, uh-uh, are you crazy? No, you're not. Uh, it's not going to work because you're actually going to create a battle of resistance that's actually going to empower that which you don't want. So one of the things that I always suggest, if you are feeling like your affirmation is too bold compared to your current reality, is you can state the current state, but say, and I'm choosing to believe that. Because your unconscious mind will not fight a choice because right. we always have a choice, if hmm. that makes sense. I like that. Yes. I'm looking at the comments over here on... Facebook and Maureen says, I don't want to get sick, stresses the immune system while I'm healthy, empowers the mind. Right. Thank you, Maureen. So the first tool 
in our arsenal for helping us to maintain our focus is our mind and our mindset. If we, I believe if we get that done and get that uh, locked in, the rest of it probably will be a little easier because now the reason for me, um, just like we just talked about, um, the positive affirmations will fuel me actually going to do what it is I want to do, but I still need to change my mind, my mindset. I choose to be healthy, fit, and trim. I like that. And there's a caveat to this. And, and that is to be mindful that when you make a declaration of who you are, the universe will respond with an opportunity. And so oftentimes this opportunity can feel adversarial. It can feel like something that is an incredible challenge until you understand that it's your opportunity. You know, because in order to build a muscle that you did not have before, you have to make a choice that was different than you would have historically in, in the face of a challenge. In other words, um, it, I'll go back to when I learned this. I had written in my journal, I am patient because I am not historically a patient person, you know. So <laughs> that day, without even thinking of it, I had gone to buy something at uh, Office Depot. I went to buy a phone and I needed some help. So I asked at the information counter for some help. And it was about 15 minutes I was waiting. Nobody was coming and I was like huffing and puffing a little bit. And finally I got some help and when I was at the register, the person from the information counter told the cashier, give him 10% off for being so patient. Ding, 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 ding. The bells went off in my head and I realized that if I am affirming that I want to strengthen my muscle of patience, the only way that's going to happen is if circumstances arise that would normally trigger my impatience and I make a different choice. So when you do that, you begin to understand the relationship between the universe and your declarations, that everything is actually working in your favor should you allow it. Oh, so there's going to be a test at the end of the, <laughs> there's going to be a quiz. At the end of the declaration. There's no test. It's only opportunities. Right. That's Meaning that it's an opportunity to exercise the thing that you said that you wanted. Exactly. You ask for it. So in order to get it, we have to give you the gift of the opportunity. Otherwise, it's just another day. Yes. Uh, we have another comment here from Maureen. She says, I agree with Mark. You have to you have to think differently. Yes, it is a choice. <laughs> Dr. Tachi is like, it's not a test. Um it is, and so opportunities are going to come and see all opportunities are not pleasant or, or does not seem pleasant at the time. Like I said, I want to be healthy, fit and trim. And I got on the bike this morning and I thought, okay, I'm going to do my ride. And she, the lady that was directing the class, she didn't do her normal entry where you get to ease into it. We hit the hills immediately. I was like, what is this? But it was a challenge for me so that I could strengthen my muscles because when you build muscle, you burn fat. I had to remember that in my mind. I was like, oh my gosh, you, you want to faint in your mind and be like, I don't want to ride the bike today. And you know what? So often, one of the things that we do that actually impedes ourselves is we identify ourselves with the challenge instead of our victory over the challenge. And so what this becomes really in having discipline over your mind is rewriting the story where you are the hero instead of the victim. 
Yay. And I'm, 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 I'm going to circle back. This conversation is all about business tools to help you maintain focus. And, and But you haven't talked about any of the time management tools. You haven't talked about calendars and apps and all of that. The first thing we need to do is get our mind together to help us to focus. Um, and it's the beginning of the year. You're going to have plenty of opportunity to focus. Phones are going to ring. You're going to set your 25-minute focus challenge, and the phone is going to ring. Are you going to pick it up? The Somebody's going to t uh, text you, or you forgot to turn the notifications off, or something's going to come up. Will you remain focused? Will you lock in? I, I remember watching the social network. I think it was the story of Facebook. And when they were creating code or whatever, they had headsets on and they were locked in and they couldn't hear anybody around them. I think they were noise canceling. Anyway, they they were locked in. They were not distracted. They didn't get distracted. And um, you might have to distract the voices in your own head. You'll, you'll have to deal with the distractions of the voices in your own head, the noise that you are creating, uh, the distractions that you create for yourself. We need to deal with those as well. And Terry, you are muted. Uh, hold on. Not, uh, no, you got to do it over there. Okay. I love the whole idea of the gift of opportunity. That is, so, you know, I, you know, I'm always looking at ways to turn a situation around and look at it different ways. I love that about Mark. Mark, Mark, and I have that capability. For instance, when we talk about when I talk about budget, I talk about a happiness plan because I find that when I reformulate the approach, the words, my mind looks at it different. And it allows me to flip the script and see it a different way. So sometimes people, we have to turn what we view as um, a distraction or a hindrance and figure out how can we use it in a, or, or describe it in a, such a way that it benefits us. Yeah, Mark says in this uh, over here, reframe. reframe. Mm -hmm reframing the, the the terms and the, the words concept, yes because i you know if exercise is a term that like freaks people out like ah oh, just move there you go move just move and 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 that it, it may be an easier word whatever it was to help you not get distracted or talk yourself out of something that you want to have done so um, I'm, I would like to talk about some tools, some actual tools, tools. If anybody else have anything to say about our own mindset tool first, because that's the first tool. And then the other tools will come into play like a calendar. I, I, um, it's amazing to me how many people don't actually use the calendar that's on their phone iPad or whatever. And, and some people don't even use a paper calendar. They have stickies everywhere or double booking appointments. Sometimes we have too many calendars. We don't know which one to follow. Ah, now Maureen has something over here. She says, uh, don't, think ex don't think about it as exercise. Think about it as nourishment for your body. Exercise is nourishment for your body. I like that how she reframed that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what calendars or what are you using? Um, I think TJ is a proponent of the Google Calendar. I say any calendar because you know you won't. There are a lot of people getting into business and becoming coaches and doing different things, but the faux pas in business are uh, booking, double booking appointments when there's apps that can book appointments for you. 
Uh, Dr. Tashi says she likes the Google Calendar as well. So um, Google Calendar is great because it integrates with all of any phone, Apple or otherwise. Um, there are, there's a, uh, an app called Calendly, C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y, which will integrate with your Google Calendar and people can book appointments with you. TJ has something else that she uses for booking appointments and I can't remember the name of it, but it helps. Go ahead. It's Accuity, A-C-U-I-T-Y, they Accuity Scheduling. Okay, and so she uses that. Did you know that if you have a Square account, Square has a scheduler that you can book appointments and get paid for your appointments, just like with Terry's Accuity and Calendly. And so, so there are different appointment tools that people can use. Um, and some people just getting started out and started in business. Some of them are still, you know, I, I went to a meeting and somebody pulled out their Franklin planner with a pen and a paper. I was like, okay, whatever works for you. I love a planner because it's all in one place. I mean, and for me, it helps me focus. I know you love a, an electronic calendar, but I, I truly am tactile. And I, I use a fountain pen because I enjoy writing with a fountain pen. So yeah, and I what do myself pulling out a planner of some kind, maybe not a Franklin planner, but a planner. Right. And because Frank, I remember having a Franklin planner. It was so heavy to carry that plus your, your bag and your, your computer. And I was like, OK, so I like my phone and I made it my business to learn how to use the calendar on the phone and a reminder. See, to do's and reminders are different than appointments. They're not the same. You can. You take appointments, um, you take your things that need to be done and you make an appointment to get them done. So you take your thing that you want to do and put it on your calendar as an appointment. They are not the same. Sometimes people just think I'm just writing stuff down. You give your your to do's and a, a assigned time. So um, what has worked for all of you? Dr. Tachi uh, says, oh, wow, a fountain pen. Um, what do you use? I like, I'm like I said, I like trying to use the stuff that came on my phone instead of me getting another app and adding two or three more apps on the phone. I just need to let me just see. So, I use the reminder app, which has gotten better on the iPhone. Um, uh, you can now assign times um, and days to the reminders. You can say, Hey, blank, um, remind me to call so-and-so or whatever, and it'll put it on there. And then at that time, it pops up and says, call so-and-so. I was like, ooh. And it wasn't an appointment, but it was a reminder with a time to do something. So what are you all using? Because I, like I said, not everybody uses everything, and you got to find out what works for you. I need it to be simple. I absolutely love uh, all the electronic stuff. So I'll use Google Calendar, as you see that I like to use, put stuff in Google Calendar. Uh, there's another app that I have called To Do, so that it, it's actually a separate to-do list and I can just kind of check off things because I'm a list person, whereas other people make vision board. I don't do that. I'm not sitting out there <laughs> and, and cutting up uh, magazines and, and stuff. For me, that's, it works for some, but for me, it's nonsense because I won't do it. So I'll, I'll make lists. And for me, that sense of accomplishment is when I'm able to cross things off on the list. So that um, to-do app works really well. But another thing that I like, because I'm also like um, uh, Terry, that I am tactile as well. I like to write things out. So in terms of notes and things that, not just that I need to do, but just kind of ideas and notes. So I love legal pads. Don't ask me why, but I adore legal pads. So I will flip and fill them up with all sorts of things. And um, I have a few for different needs. Now, yes, there's probably a lot of paper 
but it is what it is. It just uh, does well for me. That's actually how, uh, you know, when you're studying for your comprehensive exams and stuff in, in graduate school, for me, just reading it out of the book was, was okay, but I needed to rewrite what I saw because it then was solidified in my head. And then another thing, it acts twofold because you know, you know how if you don't write for a while, you kind of lose that writing skill, like physically writing. I have to say, because I went to Catholic school, I have impeccable cursive. So everything I write, I always write in cursive. And that's kind of like practice for me to make sure I keep my cursive up. So it may seem silly, but I don't know. That's why I do it too. Well, no, it is not silly. I have composition books everywhere because, okay, I, I like the legal pad thing. But I know me, I'm not going to find wherever I put it, the idea in the page. So I use my composition books and I title them. I got one for biz chicks. I got one for the real estate company. I got one for, and I just, I can, I know where my ideas are now. And see what we're talking about here is whatever is going to help you focus. I have a whiteboard over here. So cause sometimes I just need to write it on the board so I can see it. And then I can erase the whiteboard. Like I have this portable whiteboard for this. This was supposed to be for the kids. Um, I saw it at Staples. It's the, the kids we use it for their homework. I mean, their, um, their learning at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Learning is like, fun. Oh, this is nice. It's got side that has lines, you know, so I'm not using it like it's supposed to be. Then there's a blank side. And I'm like, oh, this is good for me jotting down something that I need to remember to put somewhere else. And I, I'm loving, uh, I'm like with Terry and, and uh, Dr. Tachi, I am very tactile as, as well. That's why I like my iPad because I can take the pencil and just write like I'm writing on a piece of paper, but not have the paper. But then there are days when you want to write on paper. It helps you focus. Exactly. Maureen says she loves writing it down too. I really enjoy the flow of a pen and the, the calligraphy effect of it all. Uh, I love seeing that cursive cut, meet the paper and it does make ideas stick. Right. So, um, so we talked about the calendar. We talked about to-do lists there. What the, the moral of the story is find what works for you and use the tool. And we talked about getting rid of distractions. Right. Find what tool works best for you. Implement that tool. Find your system. Find your focus system. What is it? Um, I do a writing room in the, and, and I know uh, Dr. Um, Yolanda was here, uh, is here, and she talked about um, a quiet room people you might need to have a quiet room get somewhere and sit down and and you know put on your noise canceling headsets put on your music or whatever it is and go get into your quiet spot whatever helps you to focus to make sure things get done um i and i've had the gift of opportunity thank you mark there's something coming up and i'm like okay and can you do this and and, and this is part of that the thing that I need to do for this project, I was like, whoa, now it is time for me to step up and do what I've been talking about. Um, Mark is reframing my, my statement here. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> if I may, rather than getting rid of distractions, what is it that increases your focus and fuels your productivity? What is it that increases your focus and fuels your productivity? I I, I like that. Um, Maureen says, yes, quiet is golden. What focuses your productivity? You know what? To-do lists really work for me. And um, I have a, I like to start the day with the top three so that I experience success. And uh, one of the things that worked for me is, and see, there's so many books and so many ideas out there and they all work or else the people probably wouldn't have wrote the book about them. What's the one thing that you need to get done for the day? Maybe it's only one, 
that you focus in on. Just let me just do this one thing. I'm gonna call Aunt Mary today. If I do that one thing, I'm golden. Yes. One of the things I like to do with to do lists is list is do it in uh, the the must haves like you're talking about. Like what are the you know one or two or three whatever it is things that must that I absolutely must do today. They must happen today. And then the other things are the bonus items. And the way that I approach it is, this is what I found works, and it's very challenging for a lot of people, is uh, once you prioritize those must-dos, you don't go to two until you've done one. Under any circumstances, you finish one before you go to two. You don't go to three before you've done two. And then anything that you do beyond those must-haves are gifts they're bonuses and it it fuels you by saying look at me look at what i was able to do i like it i mentally do that for some of my tasks like i'm working with a client file or something and then i'm tempted to go and pick up another client file i'm like no 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 i need to stay right here until i finish this client's file finish everything about this client file that needs to be done then I can move on. Thank you, Mark. And Dr. Tachi says, good stuff, Mark. This One one thing that I would add is the other thing that I always suggest is put the thing that you are feeling the most resistance to as the first thing. Because completing that uh, will, will fuel you to finish the rest. So the thing for which you feel the most resistance, tackle that one first. I like that. Somebody said eat the frog first. Okay. Um, That is genius. Because you're putting all of your good, all of your energy, um, probably your, your best energy into it. First, meaning that the rest of it, you you don't have to expend that much energy. But if you did it the opposite way, you have no energy left to do the hard thing or to do the challenging thing because you use it all up on the the easier things. I um, yeah. Get the hard one done first. The, that one call you just don't want to make but you know that you need to do it or the one that's the most challenging, get it done. I love that. And then we have the sound bath woman in here herself. We're getting ready to, um, um, begin to close the room but we just wanted to say, hey, there's Trinette. How are you? Um, and welcome to our conversation. We've been talking about business tools to help you stay focused. I read the, the, It was going to be maintain focus, but I couldn't put all of that in the title. So um, because most people are focused, but you got to maintain the focus and, and doing to finding tools and strategies to maintain your focus. This, okay, so I'm going to ask everybody to go around again. And um, What is your favorite thing to help you focus? And uh, also to remind you that this is being recorded over on our YouTube page and our Facebook page. What is your number one tool for focus? It could be internal or external. Um, TJ? Mine would be, um, like Carolina said, music instead of having background noise that's distracted me. So I would say music. That helps me focus. And it's not, you know, not anything that's going to make me dance or anything. It has to be like <laughs> instrumental, instrumental or classical. That really gives my brain focus. Nice. Um, Dr. Tachi? Same thing with Terry, music and or, not and or, and scents. So uh-huh. like a good candle going, um, a, I, I bought these fantastic room sprays from Trap 
and they're really like pure and potent and you will like smell it for hours to come. So you just inhale and that goodness and it, it puts you in a good place. One of my um, favorite scents is kind of like um, like gar- a gardenia scent. It's mm. one of the ones I love. And it's because every time I go to the Nappy Convention, it's held at the Fountain Blue in Miami Beach, and that's the scent that they have pumped throughout the um, the lobby and everything. So when I found this and it smelled just like that, every time you spray it, it's this great feeling that comes over you, and it just makes me more productive. Nice, um, Yolanda. Thank you. He said, "What was my what's my scent? What's your favorite favorite focus tool? The the thing that helps you focus? Uh, right now it's club it's clubhouse because you know I, it it keeps me on time. Like when you said you're closing the room, I'm like, oh my goodness, okay, where am I in what I what my task were? Um, but usually usually having something some sound is my focus tool, and as long as I'm keeping that sound in this perspective, like in a proper place, it's in the background and I haven't stopped working, then that's that's good. All right. And then uh, Miss Soundbath, what's your favorite focus tool? Hello there, everyone. I um, have to say also music. I listen to either instrumentals, jazz, meditation music. And I also, actually, my diffuser is going right now. If you get a diffuser and put like, I'm not burning, I'm not burning, but I have gardenia in there right now. And you put five drops in it, it fills the room and stays for hours. So music and scents for me as well. Nice. Mark. Well, for me, the first thing is, I make sure to write down uh, my definition of success for the day so that I know what I'm focusing on to what end so that I'm not just doing, uh, but to what end I meditate on that, on what it feels like to be successful in that capacity before I even start out. And I use a program called Brain FM and put headphones on and Brain FM has music and it also has um uh sounds that are designed allegedly scientifically for focus and concentration so you can choose what type of sounds you want and the interval of time that you want it to be played nice um, uh, Mark, uh, is that an app uh brain fm is that an app um terry is asking is brain fm an app mark yeah, it's, it's desktop and it's also an app. Yes. Okay. And um, Maureen over here on YouTube and Periscope and Facebook, um, what do you use for your... Um, I can't... Um, what is your number one thing to help you focus, Maureen? And Maureen, oh yes, yeah, so she's going to answer. And then, hey, Tim, Tim, do you want to join in and tell us what your favorite, your number one um, tool to focus? And this is being recorded over here on Facebook and YouTube. Oh, I think I need to invite him. Did I not? I did. Okay. Anybody else want to weigh in? I'm gonna look into that. Um, my thing is music as well. And um, I like my uh, Beats headphones, sometimes just to put them in and have the noise just canceled. Anybody else want to chime in? Tim, are you just hanging out there? Appreciate you being here. So with that, uh, did Maureen put her comment over there yet? No, not yet. We, we're waiting for her. Okay. So this is the conversation for today. 
business tools to help you focus. And um, we really did like, I, I, I did, I liked the different uh, focus tools. I'm going to go look up that Brain FM. And then I like Mark's comment about my definition of success for today. What is that? What is my definition of success for today? Meditate on that. I was like, huh, oh, okay. And then I can use my music to meditate. Get locked in. So thank you all for the conversation today. Thank you for everybody. Um, Yolanda, okay, Miss Soundbath, you need to tell me your first name again. Let me look. It might be already on here. Gabby, yes. Okay, I'm good now. Thank you for being here. Dr. Tachi, TJ, Mark, Terralina, everyone. Hey, John, um, welcome to the room. We are talking about business tools to help you focus. Do you have one that you use? We are recording, but uh, if you'd like to take the stage and talk about what you use to focus, we are more than happy to hear what you got to say. Um, hold on for just a minute. I will bring you... Oh, thank you, TJ. I forgot you're doing that. This is being recorded over on our um, YouTube page, which we're going to be closing out over here in just a minute. So everybody watching, hey, Sean say, everybody watching live on the replay for Biz Chicks Live, thank you for tuning in. The conversation will continue over in the clubhouse. Everybody enjoy the rest of your morning and the people in the clubhouse stay tuned. We're going to continue the conversation because John is going to be telling us what he uses to maintain his focus.